Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, meeting of the and convening of the Los Angeles City Board of Public Works today, Wednesday, July 28th, 2021. Uh, good morning, Mr. Knight. Do we have a quorum? Good morning, President Good. TJ Knight, Assistant Executive Officer, President Pro Tem Davis, Commissioner Coloza, Commissioner Villegas. I'm sorry, Commissioner Villegas is absent. Commissioner Coloza. This meeting and, uh, is being recorded. President Kidd are present. We do have a quorum. We are also joined this morning by City Attorney mm -hmm. Representative Tenia Isigide. Uh, we have no speaker cards under public comment, no neighborhood council commentary, and no speaker cards under any of our items at this time. Why? Right. Hey, TJ, you forgot about me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Commissioner Garcia. Sorry. Commissioner Garcia is also present. Sorry about that. Can never be good about my speakers. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, TJ. And uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody's faces. Um, Kevin, even though you don't get to see everybody in person, you do get the Hollywood squares. And so uh, you're able to actually make sure you see everyone, um, which is a perverse benefit of the Zoom thing, right? You, you, you actually do get to see everyone. Um, so, uh, Quickly, we'll take uh, the uh, our motion to approve the minutes from Friday, July uh, 2nd, 2021. Do I have a second on that? Second. Um, any concerns or objections? Vice President Garcia, Commissioner Closa? None. All right, hearing none, uh, the uh, minutes from Friday, July 2, 2021 are adopted and approved forthwith. Um, so, with that, um, our first uh, uh, item of business <clears throat> is, as many of you know, the awarding of uh, the Swiss Army Knife Award. Now, I, I think folks um, are somewhat aware of this, but I'm going to provide a little context. And uh, as, as, as everyone knows, thanks to the Hollywood Squares, we have a uh, guest speaker and a few other speakers. Um, I wanted to frame this in a couple of ways. One, on a, on a practical level, well, actually, on a meta level, um, the Department of Public Works, and this has been as, as crystallized over the course of the last um, almost year and a half now um, through myriad um, uh, pandemic surges, uh, uh, you know, historic pandemics, new pandemics, um, we have watched uh, uh, so many folks in the Department of Public Works, many of whom are on the screen right now, um, just function as superstructure, right? We've kept the city going. Um, you know, I proudly say we are the economic sustainability and opportunity engine of the city of Los Angeles. Um, and, and we continue to do that. And many folks have worn many hats and assumed many roles that they didn't anticipate, that they weren't necessarily adequately prepared for, and yet um, took it on. That is, that is the nature um, of our work, and, and there are many folks um, in the Department of Public Works who have, who have embodied the spirit of what this award, um, the Swiss Army Knife Award, is intended to be. Um, on a practical contextual basis, um, uh, I, you know, I think folks know, but they should get a little bit of history. You know, this is an award uh, that my um, predecessor, um, uh, former President Sumer, or Sooner Boomer, Boomer Sooner, um, Kevin James, uh, uh, thought up. And um, we were on the cusp, on the cusp of awarding it. Um, and then this little global um, quagmire consumed our world. Um, and so uh, there was, there was going to be an in-person uh, presentation of this and everything uh, ground to a halt. And <clears throat> we were close to being able to do it again in person. And as everyone knows, we sort of, we, we moved back, um, reverted back for at least several weeks. And I certainly felt, um, and I think a lot of folks felt like, um, we could wait no longer. We could wait no longer to highlight, celebrate, recognize, um, uh, uh, and, and, and really just lift up um, uh, our, 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 our inaugural recipient of the Swiss Army Knife Award, um, Brother Ted Allen. Um, so 
what I'm going to do right now, and I'll formalize that in a, in a bit, Ted, but um, to kick it off, um, I'm going to, uh, even though, again, there are no pictures uh, uh, to, to uh, memorialize his, his presence here, um, uh, there is this award. Uh, and and um, I'm going to give it up. There are pictures of you, Kevin. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Kevin, the virtual gavel, to uh, uh, to say a few words um, about the word. Uh, thank you, President Good, and it's great uh, to see all of you uh, today on this beautiful Wednesday morning. Um, a special hello to uh, my former colleagues on the Board of Public Works, uh, Commissioners Davis, Coloza, and Garcia, and please tell Commissioner Viegas I said hello. Um, uh, Ted Allen, congratulations. Um, thank you for the, the, the great work that you've done and continue to do over the, uh, the, the course of your career at the City of Los Angeles on behalf of all of our amazing uh, uh, residents and all the folks that work in Los Angeles and pass through Los Angeles uh, uh, for your amazing work. As, as President Good mentioned, um, we came up with uh, the Swiss Army Knife Award uh, a couple of years ago, almost well, a year and a half ago, um, and wanted to, it was all prepared. Um, we have this really cool plaque that I was able to see when we were still in person before the pandemic, um, and the pandemic hit and we kind of put everything on hold. Um, uh, and then, of course, the opportunity arose again, as Greg mentioned, when we looked like we were going to be back in person. And here we are again. Um, and with, we're not going to wait any longer. Um, and there are a couple of reasons I, I think that we should not wait any longer. Um, one, uh, it's just time to recognize Ted for all of his, his great work. And two, um, uh, I, I think there are amazing public works employees and team members uh, in every bureau that deserve this award. And so we need to <laughs> start now so that, uh, that others can, can receive it uh, in the future because we have uh, so many folks in the department that uh, are efficient uh, and reliable when it comes to numerous areas of importance. And just because of, uh, let me just share a little bit about the, uh, the symbolism of the Swiss Army knife and in, in the naming of this. Um, it, it, it is efficient. It's, uh, there are different sizes that you can purchase, but they all had these really interesting pieces um, and uh, of different size and scope and uh, breadth of expertise and use in life. Um, and so uh, when I thought over the years of, um, as my time at Public Works was coming to a close, when I, I thought about uh, the work that um, I had specifically uh, asked Ted to do um, uh, in a number of different areas, working within Public Works and with um, other city departments, um, the, uh, and, and not, it's about Ted Allen today, of course, but there were a number of people that, uh, that depending on the bureau that we were working with, had been so, uh, reliable and have stood out in so many ways, uh, in collaboration and cooperation and, and, uh, just the symmetry that I think that the, uh, the Swiss Army Knife, uh, provides. It's someone that you can go to if you, uh, have, no idea where to start. Um, and Ted, I think that you've, uh, you've embodied that role um, at the Bureau of Engineering uh, uh, for us at the Board of Public Works and in my tenure. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I thought this would be an enjoyable way to do it. Um, it was a symbolic way to do it. And it, um, uh, it's uh, a, a really cool trophy. I like cool trophies. Um, and I think it's a really cool trophy that, uh, uh, that uh, you can use however you want or put it on eBay if you want. But, uh, but either way, um, it is a, uh, a token of, of our appreciation from um, the Board of Public Works. And my appreciation is the former president of the Board of Public Works for uh, all of the cooperation, collaboration, and this happened, by the way, as everyone knows. Everybody knows that has worked with Ted, whether you're in the city family or you're one of our very important constituents that we serve. Um, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is or night or morning. 
um, Ted, you're always reliable and always responsive. And uh, for that, greatly appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And I look forward to many, many, many more years of the ability to work with you. Thank you. Hey, Greg, do you have the, uh, oh, excuse me, President Good. Do you have the, uh, the, uh, uh, the language of that? Not to put you on the spot. I do. Um, I was going to read it later. Would you like me to read it? Uh, no, I think you can read it whenever you want. Just I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, uh, here in a sec. Okay. Um, but thank you. Um, and, 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 and our next speaker, I, I would just say one quick thing about, which is, um, and I have one thing to add, go ahead. Okay. I, I know very, you know, it, one of the true testaments to, um, the quality of one's work, leadership, et cetera, um, is frankly the trust with which, um, their boss, um, uh, uh, treats them, um, and empowers them. And I know, I mean, the, the, there, there are examples of this throughout the Department of Public Works. I know a few folks um, uh, more trusted by their boss um, uh, to take care of business um, than Ted um, and, and with the trust of Gary Lee Moore. And so uh, uh, our city engineer, uh, of course, is with us. And so, Gary, um, take it away. Can I just say one more thing, Gary? I'm yeah. sorry to step on Greg's. Everybody forget, everybody forget what this was like? I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to, I also want to say thank you to Julie Allen too. Um, Julie, uh, uh, thank you for uh, 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 your work with us in the work that we did with Ted. Um, and uh, I know that it's uh, an amazing partnership uh, at the, uh, at the Allen household. And thank you for being here. And uh, uh, thank you for your uh, willingness to uh, uh, to share Ted with us and to share your time with the city too and all that work that we did. With that, um, I uh, won't go back to Greg Good. I will introduce our city engineer, Greg Moore. Good. Uh, Gary Moore. <laughs> hey, President Good, thank you for the introduction, President Good. Well. Gary Lee Moore. Well. <laughs> thank you, President Good and, and the other guy. <laughs> You're welcome, Gary. Uh, uh, I think his name's Kevin somebody. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I let him into our meeting, and I don't know, you know. I know, I know. It's a tough crowd. <laughs> hey, uh, Ted Allen, uh, Deputy City Engineer, we're you're joined this morning. Uh, we're so pleased that you're being recognized. And uh, we have many of your colleagues uh, from the uh, executive division is here, your direct reports, and, of course, uh, uh, your family is also here. And uh, I was looking at my Swiss Army knife, and I have five functions. And I wish I could use five of them, okay? I only have five. And I looked it up, and there's actually the, the biggest Swiss Army knife has 83 functions. And I think that describes Ted Allen. If, uh, you know, I aspire to get to five, and Ted's at 83. And I think that really talks about him. You know, when the pandemic hit, uh, the Bureau of Engineering, we were able to pivot quickly because of Ted's commitment and always pushing us in technology and the Bureau of Engineering. Ted's an outstanding knowledge across so many fields of engineering because wherever he worked, he put in the time and the effort to go and learn the subject in a manner that took beyond eight to five. He took it home. He studied. And so uh, as Former uh, President James said he could call Ted and he knew where to go because he's always taken that uh, extra initiative to go and learn. Besides being an outstanding engineer in his spare time of not raising two children, he also learned programming. And uh, that, that's an artistry. You know, uh, our, I know our Chief Deputy City Engineer Deborah Weinchop's on here who's an architect, and I've always admired architects for their artistic abilities, but they, they know so much. And I think Ted is an artist when it comes to programming. The ability to see the landscape and to see how it comes together is, a, is just a skill uh, that uh, very few have. He's a visionary that comes outside the city. Right now in Build LA, which is talking about unifying all of the services 
that the city provides to constituents when they want to build in the city of LA. Ted's really leading that effort in a very large piece. And because of this uh, ability to integrate technology and practicability, you know, being able to be, to make it a practical solution. And uh, two last things I want to say is Ted's a mentor. Um, if Ted, if you, uh, Ted has a way of explaining things and making you feel like you understand, even though he's at level 100 and I'm at level one, and Ted just makes you feel uh, never intimidated when he explains things to you. And he lets you ask questions. Even if you ask him three times, he has the same patience to answer them three times like it was the first time. And I so much appreciate that. And lastly, Ted's just a nice person. Ted, uh, we just enjoy uh, working with you and being with you on a daily basis and uh, so appreciative of this award. And all of us here uh, applaud you on this. And well, well done, Ted. Thank you. And someday you can teach me how to use the five uh, of them. So thank you on my Swiss Army knives. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Gary. Um, uh, Commissioners, uh, I want to give you the opportunity uh, to weigh in um, on the Swiss Army uh, family, by the way. Um, it's what I really appreciate <laughs> thought about. Um, Vice President Garcia. Thank you, and good morning to everyone. I'll be quick because I know there's a lot of folks here, but Ted, um, I also did look up also the uh, Swiss Army knife, and I just wanted to get a general definition of what that meant. I mean, I know I my husband has a Swiss Army knife here, so I know how he uses it in different ways but it said jack of all trades which made me think that is ted ted is the jack of all trades and i just have to say thank you thank you for being so unique in your style uh and thank you for really going back to gary what just said is making us feel like we understand what you're saying and what you're doing even though probably your side of things are super complicated, but on our side, it was just like, oh, it's peachy. He's Ted got it. So I just have to say that that's very unique. And the other thing about you, Ted, is that you always have a Hawkeye view of things on any issue. And that's also very important. Uh, you not only just see it through an engineering way or through the Bureau of Engineering, but you see it through the city through the public, through the constituency, through how this is gonna make everything better in the different ways that we can come up with a solution that works for everyone. And, and that is a unique and very impressive ability and way of being that you have, Ted. So I, I, I enjoy working with you since the first day. Thank you for always making me feel very welcomed and, and like if I knew what I'm doing in engineering as well. So thank you for that. And also, you know, to your lovely family, I, I'm pre I, I can only imagine what type of conversation you guys have at dinner. I'm sure they're all engineering type of conversations, but congratulations. I know you're raising a good family. I know you are just because that's the way that you are and that you carry yourself. So congratulations on that. And I enjoy knowing that we had similar childhoods uh, growing up and playing in the street and watching our lights go out at the same time. So th thank, thank you, because I could see where it all le le led to. So Ted, Enjoy your Swiss Army knife. I hope you have a real one that you can uh, mess with <laughs> and that you carry with at times because they are very handy. And we hope to keep you uh, for many, many more years here at Public Works. I bet Ted has a collection of Swiss Army knives. Then eventually he got rid of them because he is a Swiss Army knife. Um, President Pro Tem Davis. Thank you, President Good. It is always a pleasure to recognize employees of Public Works for their achievements and for their productivity. Uh, a Swiss Army Knife, I did not know that that was the specific name of the award that uh, past President James uh, identified. But according to many sources, if a person is called uh, a recipient of the Swiss Army Knife uh, Award, he or she is a generalist who is truly a jack of all trades and uh, provides a level of competency in many different skills. And certainly that reflects Ted Allen 
And we need such a person in such a time as this. When we are confronting challenges in our organization, and more importantly, when we need someone who can bring people together. And so in addition to being an outstanding uh, engineer and an expert at many various tasks in his profession, Ted, as a generalist, is a person whom we can depend upon to communicate to many of us across different aspects and different levels of involvement in our organization. So I commend him. He has always been, as has been expressed, a very uh, open, congenial person. And I think being excellent in a given field is one thing, but possessing the kind of attitude to help infect others, inspire others, to motivate others is something that is invaluable. And so, Ted, we thank you for being our uh, Swiss Army knife and we hope that there will be other Swiss Army Knives following you in years to come. Congratulations. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Uh, Commissioner Colosa. Uh, thank you, President Good, and thank you to former President Kevin James for um, recognizing uh, talent, right? Recognizing uh, Ted Allen and for the service that he's given to the city and I have to say that uh, we should have President uh, former President James and Ted Allen in our board meetings more often because we have um, your entire fan club here and this is so many people <laughs> that I've seen in our meeting in such a long time but this is um, all the people that would have been there in the boardroom with you Ted to recognize you and I'm so sorry that the pandemic upended what would have been an incredible celebration of you in um, our hearing room but uh, know that that by no means takes away from all the hard work um, and, and gratitude that we feel um, towards you and in your service to the city. Um, I say that uh, Ted, to echo what everyone's already said, is somebody that you want at every meeting. Because um, usually at our meetings, we all know, we're, we're usually discussing a problem, a challenge, and something that we need to solve. And oftentimes, um, you, you will want one of, one, of, one of two Teds, and two Teds if you're lucky there, either Ted Jordan or Ted Allen. And, and so uh, every meeting, you know, you have at least one Ted, you're going to walk away with an action item and a way to solve that problem. And that's how good Ted is. Um, it doesn't matter if it's tied to technology, if it's tied to a specific permitting issue, you know it's going to happen, it's going to get done, and you trust uh, what's going to happen will actually solve the problem and make constituents feel better because um, Ted is that good. You know, sometimes you need uh, a screwdriver, sometimes you need, um, let me see what are the different tools here, a corkscrew, right? Uh, a blade, a screwdriver, a can opener, right? those are all some different tools uh, and a Swiss Army knife and Ted has that all in his back pocket. And uh, uh, the nice thing too uh, about Ted is that everybody loves working with him. Um, not just here in the city family, we all um, love working with Ted because of how nice and generous he is, right, with his time and answering our questions. But that's not just specific to the city family or even the public works family. Everybody on the outside also loves working with Ted. Uh, he is one of our main faces for development services. And um, I can tell you they all love to work with Ted just as much because that he, he is somebody at the city who's willing to listen and um, brainstorm and come out with some uh, options and solutions to move forward. And so that's the kind of person you are, is that you transform uh, public works. You make us look good. So thank you for, for letting us take credit for, for all your hard work and your team's hard work. Um, and just by the fact that you're embedded you know, in public works means that all the work that you've put into BOB and to, to making our department look good has really made the city of LA um, not just a regional leader, but really a national leader um, in all these 
initiatives that you've taken the lead on, like Build LA, that was talked about already, that's really going to transform the entire city and the kind of work that we do. And so I just thank you, Ted, for being uh, our champion. And I know that you're inspiring um, so many people at BOE and within our entire department to really look at their job and not be confined by that, right? To know that you can step in and play a role and go that extra mile um, and help your colleagues, right? Not just because you need to, but because you want to and you feel like it's the right thing to do. And I feel like in addition to you being uh, such a technician, that's another quality that separates you is the fact that you actually, you really truly care about your job and you truly care about helping um, others. And so congratulations, Ted. We're also proud of you. And shout out to, to Julie, the other Swiss Army knife, <laughs> who probably has uh, 100 functions um, on, on her Swiss Army knife as well. So you are the power couple of public work. So congratulations, um, Ted. And we're, we're also proud of you. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Yeah, indeed, uh, the Swiss Army family. Um, uh, so many things have come up from uh, the, the, the comments we've heard, um, ranging from, like, I feel like there's a joke, you know, what happens when you get a lawyer and a Swiss Army knife together, uh, you know, like, there's that. Um, also, the, the corpse crew on uh, Ted's Swiss Army knife has been particularly important over the last 16 months. Um, so many things. Um, I, I, I will just, um, I want to hit on, uh, on a couple. One, um, actually, Kevin uh, said something about, you know, if you don't know where to start. And, and you know, as I was, I was thinking about the, not just the, the countless interactions um, and, and, and pieces of work that um, I've had the opportunity to work with you, Ted, on um, in my role here as, as president, but for the last eight years, um, I mean, uh, <clears throat> my reliance on trust in um, and confidence in uh, 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 availing myself of you in situations um, of question, of challenge, of quandary uh, started, you know, in 2013, um, as soon as I started working with you when, when uh, I was with the mayor's office. And um, uh, it, 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 rather than thinking about specific examples, um, it really is uh, as simple as this. Um, there are very few people, what we, we all are, you know, we've all, no one's first rodeo uh, is happening right now. And yet we all know that this is such a complex enterprise that we were a part of and have the opportunity to be a part of that still multiple things could happen today where I'm like, I don't have any idea where to go, right? In fact, Kevin and I had a conversation literally last night, and both of us presumptively know a little about public works, and we were both like, um, and and they're, you're who I go to. <laughs> if, if I'm like, I don't know where to start, um, I go to Ted Allen, um, and, and now I know I'm programming, because I definitely don't know where to start um, uh, on that front. So I, I do think that that's a real... Um, a really amazing uh, signature of yours. Um, the other, and <clears throat> I don't think anyone here would, would uh, take umbrage with this, is despite your, uh, your, your incredible skills, um, your career of achievement um, already, even as a young buck, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, you operate with humility always. I mean, um, it is it is uh, model worthy, um, and again, as does your your better half. Um, uh, uh, you, you both you are you are a family of humility and excellence. It's 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 a uh, awesome. Um, so I I'm really grateful for that. It's something that I uh, really personally admire um, in terms of how you approach things. Um, uh, that humility is 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 truly a trademark of you all, both of you. Um, and, and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for your service, grateful for your leadership, I'm grateful for your friendship. Um, you also don't give me crap anytime I'm making uh, difficult uh, uh, requests. You, you, you just have a sense of context. Everybody's trying to do stuff. Sometimes we just got to do stuff, and you do. Um, so thank you, Ted, and congratulations. Congratulations. Um, two things to read off 
for you. Um, first, um, in, a, in, a, in a bit of history, I have a certificate of, uh, I've got a cert for you. Um, <clears throat> Board of Public Works honors Ted Allen, Deputy Civil Engineer, um, in recognition of your multi-purpose performance, awareness to efficiency, diverse skill set, consistent productivity and reliability, and willingness to use various tools to solve complex public works matters. This makes you the perfect recipient of the first ever Swiss Army Knife Award. Um, and this is signed uh, uh, by uh, then President Kevin James, um, Vice President Aura Garcia, um, President Pro Tem Mike Davis, Commissioner Jessica Colos, and Commissioner Teresa Viegas on March 13th, 2020. Um, so, uh, <laughs> wow. We owe him another one now. <laughs> <laughs> you will receive this. Um, and then, frankly, I'm a little embarrassed because this was Army Knife apparently only has three functions um, and no corkscrew for sure. Um, but it had to fit on the plaque. I, I know, I thought through that. Um, the Swiss Army Knife Award. Ted S. Allen, Deputy City Engineer. Um, the Swiss Army Knife is known for its multi-purpose performance and its sleek efficiency. Ted, um, as a, you know, like I say, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a fellow gentleman who the number on our driver's license continues to grow, um, anytime you're referred to with sleek efficiency, I mean, that's just, that's awesome. Um, Ted Allen's diverse skill set and efficient and consistent productivity and consistent with what what the Swiss Army Knife represents. Um, Ted, uh, to use a scientific term, and uh, you know, um, we're being recorded for what it is, you are a badass. Um, and uh, we are incredibly proud and grateful to have you um, in the Department of Public Works. Um, you're never being allowed to leave. Um, and, uh, and, and congratulations, brother. Um, it's a real honor to work with you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Army Knife. Thank you, President Good, and thank you, former President James. I, I, it's hard to get used to calling you Kevin, but someday I'll do it, I guess. <laughs> and to all the board and Gary, thanks to everyone. Um, you know, a lot of you will probably be surprised by this because I talk so much, but I'm actually pretty introverted by nature, so it's, it's a little uncomfortable to be the center of attention, I have to say, but I really, really appreciate this, largely because, you know, I do, I take, um, my service to the city is so important to me, and I know it is to all of you as well, and so I really feel like, it feels good to feel like we're making a difference in the city, and I know from working with all of you that uh, we all do that, and I'm just so appreciative, and thank you to the, uh, the board and Kevin James for this award. I wanna thank Gary and Deborah for their mentorship over the years, I mean, Gary mentioned me being a mentor, but the two of them have really been great mentors in my life, and I really appreciate it. And all of the exec team, it's so great to work with all of you. And, you know, all the employees, not just in my program, although, of course, I'm especially partial to my program because I work with them the most, but all of BOE and so many employees in other departments as well. I just, you know... As much as we all try, any one of us really can't do much without a partnership of all the others in the city. And so I really do um, see this as being, you know, just a reflection of the work that we all do and, and everyone on the team. And it, it's just such a pleasure to work for the city and the Bureau of Engineering. And, uh, you know, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't feel as sleek as I was a year ago, at least physically speaking. I have uh, a few COVID pounds that uh, I need to get rid of to get back to being oh, a, a closer to sleek. But uh, as far as, you know, trying to get things done, I just, I feel like, you know, the, the, the service to the city and empathy for people that want to get their projects done or want to get something done, I just really every day, feel like, you know, I want to help people. I want to make things better. If we see a way that we're doing something, uh, not just solving the one problem, but how can we change things? And it's kind of our philosophy throughout the Bureau. If we shouldn't be doing it this way, what can we do to change it? And, and again, I wouldn't be able to do any of those things without, uh, you know, 
a bunch of partnerships within the city because by myself, I really can't do anything. And uh, of course, I wanna echo the thanks to Julie here as uh, well, those of you that can see all the squares, see we're sitting right next to each other. So thank you, Julie. And uh, yeah, I just, I, as much as I talk a lot, I don't think I wanna take a lot of time here because I know you guys have a whole board meeting, but I just, I can't say enough how much I appreciate the, the friendship with all of you and, um, you know, just working with all of you makes work such a pleasure and serving the residents of the city successfully. So thank you. I have, a COVID, I have a COVID Zoom confession, by the way. I'm always trying to figure out the Allen's Zoom room. I, can't, I still can't. Maybe it's because I'm a, not an engineer. I still can't figure out how that works. Anyway, does, was someone else uh, asking me to say something? Okay. All right. Well, Ted, you, um, uh, as much as anyone, will appreciate the fact that uh, uh, we have business to take care of. Um, but uh, it has been an absolute uh, pleasure to, to pause and reflect on um, uh, the prowess of the Allens um, and, and the Swiss Army Knife family and use the Swiss Army Knife and our your award winner. And Kevin, um, by the way, Ted, um, if you have a hard time calling him Kevin, um, uh, offline I can, I can share with you some other things that I call him. Uh, <laughs> offline, we, we can talk about that. Um, <laughs> Kevin, great to have you here, Ben. Um, really a pleasure, and this was a wonderful idea, and, and I'm glad we were able to finally bring it to fruition, however virtually. And um, Ted, you got some stuff to collect, um, and uh, that's going to require you to come by in person and say hi. Um, Sounds so great. <laughs> congratulations, my friend. Thank you. So give him one more round of applause, and uh, um, we will move on uh, to our meeting. Um, thank you very much, sir. Um, and thanks, Kevin. You're obviously, you're welcome to stay, brother. Um, <laughs> see you, man. Talk thanks, to you later. everyone. All right. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Ted. All right. Um, I believe we are up with bids, TJ. We are. Okay. I will ah. come in. Let me mask up, everybody. So, item one. <clears throat> Bids were received at 10 a.m. for the following public works projects. Um, secondary sewer renewal program, DCON01, DO2. Uh, work order SZC14008. Estimated cost $5,073,691. This is in CD14. Uh, project number two um, is in CD13. This is Tiny Home Village, Westlake, 2301 West 3rd Street, work order E1908874, estimated cost $3,497,000. And again, this is in CD13. Um, and we will um, open it here. Good morning, TJ. Good morning, Hubert. Good morning. Uh, so for project number one, secondary school sewer renewal program, Decon 01. We have received four bids. The first bid is from Basilge B is in Victor A S. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The first bid that I'm reading is from Tomovich B Associates. And that is for uh, project number one. And the total bid amount for Tomovich and Associates is four million five twenty-one three fifty-seven and eighty seven. Once again, Tomovich and Associates, four million five twenty-one three fifty-seven and eighty seven. And the second bid for product number one is from MNR Construction Incorporated. <coughs> MNR Construction Incorporated total bid amount is four million five eighteen seven oh five. Four million five eighteen seven oh five. And the next bid for project number one is from Vasilj Incorporated, V A S I L J, and their total bid amount is three million oh five two 
six ten and thirty six cents. Three zero five two six one zero thirty six cents. And the fourth and final bid for Project B One is from Ramona Incorporated. And the total bid amount for Ramona Incorporated is three million eight five six. Zero zero eight three eight five six zero zero eight. All right. Thank you, uh, TJ. Thank you, Kumi. We will now go on to um, Project Two, this is Tiny Home Village in CD thirteen. Okay, um, do I have a motion to uh, uh, accept these bids? So moved. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Thank you, TJ and Kumi. Um, uh, any objections, uh, uh, Commissioners or Commissioner Closing? All right, hearing none, uh, the bids for uh, secondary sewer renewal program. Decon one and for the tiny home village and CD 13 are uh, received and accepted uh, for twenty. So um, thank you all very much. Okay. That will bring us to item number two. Um, item number two uh, is in CD 15 uh, re revision to task order solicitation toss number Zero four Arthur Gensler Jr. and Associates, San Pedro, Little Italy Plaza project, recommending the board authorize the city engineer to issue a revision of toss number zero four to Arthur Gensler Jr. and Associates, increasing the budget authority from uh, one thousand one excuse me one hundred sixty six thousand one hundred dollars to six hundred sixty six one hundred or thousand one hundred dollars. Sorry, all I can read. Uh, for architectural design services for the San Pedro Little Italy Plaza project. Work order E190-8644, C-124805. And I suspect Mr. Fierce um, is with us on this item. Yes, well, good afternoon. Good morning. Um, okay. Background on this. Um, this project is driven by support of the Italian American community in and around San Pedro will create a cultural focal point and is envisioned as a vibrant urban space. The site is located at the existing Pepper Tree Plaza next to the historic San Pedro uh, City Hall. The existing plaza is at the corner of South Harbor and West 6th Street. On September 11, 2019, a motion was introduced by Council Member Joe Briscano relative to funding and design services to be provided by Gensler and subsequently adopted by the City Council, instructing DOE to manage and administer Gensler's design services and start the project design process. On December 18, 2019, the Board approved to issue the sole source task order to Gensler with a not to exceed budget authority of $166,100 to provide design services for the San Pedro Little Italy Plaza. The design services included community design workshop, schematic design, online community design survey, 
design development documents, and a donor package for visual representations of the design for fundraising events to finance construction of the new plaza. A second motion in the amount of 500000 to amend this council action of September 11, 2019, to increase the total funding for design services to 666100 for the project was approved by the City Council on September 29, 2020. Um, upon the um, completion of the initial design phase, Gensler was asked to submit a fee proposal to complete the design services for the remainder of the project. After negotiations, Gensler submitted a final fee proposal uh, on June 11, 2021, in the amount of uh, $606,400, with a 10% contingency, $59,700. For the total revised past budget authority requested this $666,100. This uh, contract is subject to the business inclusion program outreach requirements and the uh, sub, sub consult utilization pledged by the consultants by business enterprises um, is as follows. Uh, the MBE goal of 18%, um, they reached 15.8%. The WBE goal of 4%, they reached 3.43%. The SBE goal of 25%, uh, they reached 8.48%. And the EBE of 8%, they reached 8.48%. The DVD of 3% goal, they reached 1.22%. Uh, BOA's estimate for the overall project cost is $6.5 million, and of that, the construction estimate is $4.4 million. Funding for this contract uh, with a budget authority of $666,100 is available in the Engineering Special Services Fund number 682, Department number 50, Appropriation Unit number uh, 50, SDEH, uh, titled the San Pedro Little Italy Plaza. So with that, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. <clears throat> um, Vice President Garcia, any questions? No questions for me. Thank you for the report. I appreciate it. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. President Pro Tem Davis. Yeah, no questions for me either. Thank you uh, very much for your report. Thank you, Mike. Um, Commissioner Closer. Um, thank you, President Good. I don't have any questions. And Mr. Pierce briefed me on this item and appreciate his team's work on this. I know it's important to the community in San Pedro and, of course, the council of things. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, I don't really have any other questions either. Um, thank you for the uh, excellent report and um, the board report as well. Mr. Pierce, I'm quite sure Council District 15 is, yeah, as Commissioner Close of the plan quite fired up about this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'll take a motion uh, to approve. So moved. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Sounds like an airport. Was that the only one who got that? That must, are you in the office? Yes. No, everybody got that on the cell phone. Yeah, I got oh. it. Oh, was that Ian? <laughs> I didn't get it. I heard Ian's voice. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Um, okay. Got it. Good to know. Um, okay. Uh, wait. Did we? Did, I'll second. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Closa. Any objections, uh, Vice President Garcia? No, none. None. All right. Then um, uh, the item is adopted forthwith. Thank you very much, Mr. Pierce. Okay. Um, Let's see, that brings us to item number three. Item number three is a use and maintenance agreement, Los Angeles County Flood Control District, Caballero Creek Park, Caballero Creek Park Project. Um, recommend the board, approve and forward this report in its transmittal to the Mayor and City Council to authorize the president or two members of the Board of Public Works and the director of the Bureau of Sanitation or designee to execute the proposed use and maintenance agreement between the Los Angeles County Flood Control District and the Bureau of Sanitation for the Caballero Creek Park Project. Um, uh, Mr. Walters, are you here on this item? 
Uh, I am here. Uh, Wing Tam, however, is oh, our hi. engineer for this one. Hi. Hi there. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning uh, President Good. And, and thank you very much for attending the Polar Op Tuesday out in the valley for those green search projects. It's, I, I heard it's very hot, but you saw the results of some of those projects, uh, especially the one in, in Victory and Ben talking to the owner. They said they, they don't have that much flooding to deal with in that corner ever since we put in uh, some of those facilities. So anyway, thank you very much for attending. My, uh, okay. my, my name's Wing Tam from Sanitation, and good morning, President Good, Commissioners, uh, 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 Assistant Executive Officer, City Attorney, and the City Board Representatives. I'm here to give you uh, seat your consideration for a use and maintenance agreement between Alley County and Alley Sanitation for the Cub Creek project. And this agreement is needed in order uh, to attain a permit with the county to allow us to construct the project. As a background of the project, uh, the pro project is to capture, treat, use storm water uh, from the creek uh, from a watershed of 11 acres. Uh, it, it is a park located in uh, CD Council District 3 near Linney Avenue and Victory Boulevard. Uh, the project will divert water from Cabrera Creek and into this newly created park. And that park's going to be 1.5 acres. And so the park includes wetland system, uh, 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 nature trail, signage, uh, shallow step, uh, chase structure, fitness uh, stations. So basically it's a passive park with water quality features. Um, the county basically owns the uh, Cabrera Creek. And so that's what reason one, one reason why when we divert the flow, we need to get agreement from the county in order to go to uh, get that water from the creek into the wetland system so that we could use that. Um, after the project completed, LA Sanitation will be responsible for o &M of the water quality improvements, and Rec and Park will be responsible for the park elements. Um, your board already previously approved an o &M agreement with Rec and Park back in August 2020 regarding the park elements of it. And so this project is currently in design, uh, started in construction later this year, and will complete construction in the 2022. So approval of this project will allow us to start construction this project. Uh, and thank you very much, and I'm here if you have any more questions for this. Thank you, Wing. Um, Vice President Garcia, any questions? No questions for me. You did a really thorough job on explaining everything that has to do around um, this. Um, it's an MOU, right, and a maintenance agreement? Correct. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Tam. Thank you, um, Vice President Garcia. Uh, Commissioner Closa? Thank you, President Good. Um, nice to see you, Mr. Tam. I from us. Um, and thank you for your briefing on this, um, and for the update on this maintenance agreement, um, just process-wise so I can understand. So um, what's before us, of course, is just the maintenance agreement, but then um, LA San will came, come back to us to actually share what the actual cost and budget of maintaining this would be. Uh, the the budget for this um, uh, maintain this project will most likely be coming our future money from the uh, say clean water program and so when we do that at that time uh, for future cost for maintenance yes we will have we will most likely come back to you uh, for that um, do you all have an estimate of how much it would cost to maintain this since you're all uh, passed for that responsibility right N not at this point right now because the project still in design uh, so once the final design is done, uh, part of that uh, requirement is that uh, we will look at and evaluate and come up with a cost estimate for o &M, including the uh, O&M manuals and all that. So that's when we first start looking at the cost of that. So uh, we anticipate this uh, the construction will complete in 2022. So before the project get constructed, we will have a o &M manual, and then we will have uh, have an uh, idea of what the cost would be. So we, we want this maintenance agree this uh, agreement in place before we calculate the O&M costs? 
Right. This is part of the what they call the LA County permit system. Mm -hmm. uh, because Cabo Creek is an LA County owned facility and we're diverting flow from that creek. They would want us to have a use agreement with them in order to get a permit to allow us to construct in the creek. Um, thanks for explaining that. I just wanted to understand process-wise what this is actually cost to LA Sand operations since we're putting, um, uh, you're taking on a lot of work is what I'm saying. <laughs> correct, correct. You're, yeah. you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I want to make sure that you, we're all um, budgeting for it um, accordingly in your operation. So I look forward to hearing um, future updates on that. But I don't oh. think, um, uh, actually, one last question, and there's, this is a, essentially this maintenance agreement is in, uh, you know, in perpetuity, right? Like, there's no uh, expiration uh, date. Actually, this agreement is for 30 years. 30. Um, and then there's an option before that to renew with the county. Got it. Okay. Um, and that's typical of a 30-year um, period for maintenance before kind of revisiting what's necessary? Correct. Correct, because the county could only have agreement up to 30 years. They, they, they won't allow anything more than that. Okay, that's helpful. And then the oversight of it is joint city-county, or is it mostly county since it's their land? Yeah, the channel is their land, so, so that's, what they, the, the, uh, that, that's what we're, we're using that facility or diverting from that site in order to, to be able to have this agreement, yes. Um, um, I think I'm good for now. Thank you, Mr. Tam, for um, answering my questions and for the additional information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Um, President Pro Tem Davis. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Tan, I wanted to better understand the whole issue of time as it relates to this project. You mentioned that we uh, are collaborating with the county and then we have to obviously do the work on their uh, property, right? Uh, what do you anticipate in terms of time that it will be before you're able to engage in that work? Okay, so we're, we're, we're talking about uh, design being completed uh, by the, by the uh, uh, next three months or so. Okay. And so we're looking at construction starting sometime at the end of this year. And it's I going to take about a year to finish the construction. So it will be, yeah, that's what time frame we're talking about. Okay, so this motion gives you the opportunity to begin the process. Correct. It allows us to uh, get a permit from the county so that we can uh, construct in their facility. Gotcha. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Um, uh, my question, Wing, um, may I, I, I you know, echo uh, Commissioner Close's um, healthy query, you know, this, it, it just, you know, the O&M and, and the long-term costs are, are, are meaningful and all this um, unavoidable. And I, and I think encouraging is the fact that Measure W allows for um, o and um, is that one of the anticipated, I mean, I know Measure W funding is certainly a key, I mean, potentially the funding source here, right? Is that also potentially the funding source for the o and like having that built in? Well, the, the, uh, the, the project's fully funded right now. And so uh, we're anticipating the, uh, the Measure W funding will provide for this o &M. We just need to program it in and like, uh, uh, Commissioner could also said, budget that into uh, uh, future fiscal year uh, for this O&M from the State Clean Water Program. Uh, and then um, I think you said it before. I'm sorry, I missed it. <coughs> you said the cost of the project will ultimately be the the cost of the project is a little bit under five million dollars. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have no further questions. I'll, I'll motion to move the item forward. Do I have a second? Second. Actually, can I ask one uh, yeah, follow-up question? Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, and is uh, just dawn on me too. Is is there a reason why we're taking responsibility for this, and why the county wouldn't, you know, if it's in their um, jurisdiction, why 
the county wouldn't be responsible for O and M for a creek that's in their district or in their area? Well, well, well actually, uh, it is a since we're putting in a structure in the county uh, channel, we basically put a low diversion box in their channel. Anytime uh, the city puts in their own facility uh, in their channel, the county will require us to maintain a facility that we put in. So that's just typical what happens with, with uh, any projects. So if the county, let's say, uh, put in storm drain in the CLA, they will be responsible to maintain the storm drain. Even those in CLA, they are responsible. So okay, it's, it's a permit yeah. requirement for you to put this in place because you have a facility near this park. Correct. Okay. Um, and remind me again, why did um, Ellie Sand? I'm sorry, this is this is where I wish um, Commissioner Vegas was here right <laughs> to, to help me understand for my knowledge because I'm, I'm less familiar with um, these projects. Is um, what was the purpose of us? This again, my for my background to putting that facility there near this park. Well, it was an opportunity site uh, because a, a new uh, park was created. It's actually one of the uh, listed uh, 50 parks identified in Rec and Park from the mayor's office. And so it's a 1.5 acre site that's a new park putting in. And since uh, a new park putting in, it was an opportunity for us to uh, clean up stormwater. And this park site is actually adjacent to Cabral Creek. It's right on the cabby corner of the creek in the LA River. And so it's an opportunity for take some of that water and clean it up. That's why we're involved. In it. Got it. Okay. I just need to understand the connection of like, why are we cleaning LA County? <laughs> <laughs> water, I appreciate that you sharing that additional information and the connection with the, the LA River. That's helpful. Um, yeah. And sorry to stop you, President Gooding, in the middle of your vote. I don't have any other questions. No worries. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll motion again to approve. Do I have a second? President Prince Davis, get a second. Um, any um, objections or concerns, uh, Garcia Colosa? All right, hearing none, the item is adopted forthwith. Thank you very much, Wayne. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, um, item four. Item four is a request for qualifications, uh, pre qualified list of contractors, um, capital improvement project, 52. 45 Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant Digester Insulation Replacement Project. Um, recommending the board, one, authorize the director of the Bureau of Sanitation to request the city engineer to issue and advertise the transmitted RFQ uh, to establish a pre-qualified list of contractors for the Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant Digester Insulation Replacement Project. Two, authorize the staff from the Bureau of Engineering and the Bureau of Sanitation to evaluate and pre-qualify the respondents based, on, based upon the requirements and procedures set forth in the RFQ. And three, direct the city engineer and the Bureau of Sanitation uh, to report back to the board with the proposed list of qualified or pre-qualified contractors for adoption work order SZT11423. Anytime I have a, a, a project with seven different names uh, on it, I know it's Ethan Wong uh, coming at us. Uh, so good morning, Mr. Wong. Good morning, President Good. Good morning, commissioners, and good morning, everybody else. Uh, this is Ethan Wong with the Bureau of Engineering, Environmental Engineering Division. Uh, we are requesting to establish a list of pre-qualified contractors for our uh, Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant Digester Insulation Replacement Project. So background on this project, uh, Terminal Island operates four egg-shaped digesters. Um, these digesters use high temperatures and uh, microorganisms to break down uh, the solids that are in the wastewater. Um, so this digestion process uh, basically el eliminates pathogens and disease that are within the biosolids so that the biosolids can then um, be deemed safe and be used as fertilizer in California's Central Valley um, and or also uh, used in the experimental Terminal Island Renewable Energy Project Deep Wells. Um, so originally these digesters were built in 1978. Um, these di 
digesters uh, measure roughly 75 feet tall uh, and they're post-tension uh, concrete structures. Um, so they're very large um, and very uh, big. And so one of the reasons why we are requesting to pre-qualify contractors is these uh, digesters have an irregular shape and obviously like uh, we will be replacing the uh, as asbestos cement shingles that act as insulation currently on these digesters. Um, so we are having issues with the asbestos cement shingles at the moment. Um, they're losing um, structural integrity and some are falling. So this creates a hazardous environment because not only is asbestos a uh, hazardous material, but also they could fall on uh, workers um, from very high um, heights. So it creates a dangerous situation. So that's why we are working uh, diligently to, to get these uh, uh, insulation uh, shingles replaced. Um, the insulation is imperative for the, the digesters because obviously the microorganisms, they perform in a, a, a warm environment. And so um, the insulation is very integral for that process. Uh, so we will be replacing um, the asbestos shingles with modern um, modern stainless steel uh, cladding and insulation. Um, and to do so, we have to have an elaborate system of scaffolding to have workers safe, not only safely remove the asbestos shingles, but also to install the new cladding and insulation and so on and so forth. Uh, we will also, as part of this process, have um, architectural lighting um, that will illuminate the digesters at night, um, which is uh, also a specialty uh, part of the scope of the project. So because of these reasons, we are requesting to pre-qualify contractors to bid on this project. Um, this board report is just to establish um, uh, or send out a request for qualifications or an RFQ to uh, interested contractors so that we can establish this pre-qualified list. Um, and then subsequent to this, we will come back to the board to uh, actually bid the project to the four highest uh, qualified pre-qualified -con pre contractors that are established because of this uh, request for qualifications. Um, that pretty much sums up my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions about this. Thank you, Mr. Wall. <clears throat> President, President Davis, any questions? Uh, I, what's the time period again, Mr. Wong, on this project? So because we are uh, requesting an RFQ to, to send out, um, you know, we've, there's uh, an advertisement period of you know, probably roughly six weeks, and then um, we will receive uh, proposals from contractors, and then we will work with sanitation to, uh, you know, score those and respond back to the contractors, come back to the board and report on the pre-qualified list um, before we go out to full advertisement. So, um, you know, it's probably going to take, you know, between four and six months to, to you know, get the uh, pre-qual out and come back to the board. Sure, and then in terms of the funding, are you uh, clear about how this project will be funded? Yes, uh, we, we have funding through uh, our, our wastewater funding sources. Um, it, it's already been identified um, that we have funding for this project. Okay, and how much are we talking about? What's the ballpark figure? Yeah, the, uh, the total uh, construction budget is almost $17 million. And so it'll be locally funded through the uh, bond money, you said? What kind through of the, the wastewater. Uh, wastewater money. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Vice President Davis. Um, uh, Vice President Garcia? No questions for me. Ethan, you did a great job in your report, and uh, Commissioner Davis asked really good questions. Um, I'm okay for now, President. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Commissioner Closer. Uh, thank you, President Good. I don't have any questions for Mr. Wong. He just me on this item. And 
uh, with work, you drive and buy these digesters and seeing them lit up. So <laughs> thanks for, for that. I hope, I'm sure it's an added safety feature too, so you can actually see that they're, they're physically there. So. Well, that was actually going to be a question of mine. Is the, are, is the lighting, and this is not dispositive, or, or, but is the, is the lighting more than aesthetic? Uh, Go ahead, Fernando. Yes, hi. Fernando Gonzalez, hey. Terminal Light and Water Reclamation Plan Manager. Uh, thanks a lot for consideration of this item. Uh, this is a way overdue uh, project replacement because, uh, like uh, uh, Ethan said, uh, our digesters were the first egg-shaped digesters ever built in America from German technology. And back in 78, asbestos was a good thing, I guess. So uh, we have, and um, for you guys that have visited our Terminal Island, you guys know that the egg-shaped digesters is one of our signature features. You can see them as you go down the Vincent Thomas Bridge. And uh, our inability to maintain them or touch them because of the asbestos you know, content on the insulation tiles has prompted this. And then we were working with the Port of LA and then uh, we pretty much, yes, the uh, lighting, uh, it is a safety, but also we like to enhance the uh, signature feature of our plant. So, uh, so that when you uh, go down the Vincent Thomas Bridge would be, you know, in a, you know, a nice feature attached to the plant. And this would be paid for um, from SEM? Yes, it is funded by the Sewer Construction and Maintenance Fund. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, I don't have any further questions. I mean, the, the, your, uh, the report was uh, quite compelling. Um, not so exciting to have 10 pound pieces of asbestos um, uh, roofing falling down all over the place. Um, that seems like a very unfortunate fate, uh, so <laughs> I wouldn't want to be around. So let's get it done. Um, so uh, uh, I will uh, motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Any objections, uh, Davis or Colosa? None for me. All right, um, thank you uh, both. Uh, the item is adopted and um, approved forthwith. So thank y'all. Thank Good you. Luck. Okay. Um, looking forward to a tour um, of, of, of the lighted shells down the road. I mean, I know you're coming back on lots of pieces with this, but yeah. Um, okay, uh, let's move now. We have um, item number five is administrative. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, communication from the mayor. Uh, the, the mayor has approved and authorized the Board of Public Works to execute contracts with five keys and programs. Uh, for services related to the implementation of the mobile pit stop bathroom and mobile showers program and urban alchemy to operate uh, the skid row cleaning program. Um, reference BPW 2021-0489. Um, do I have a motion to um, uh, receive and file this item? Uh, accept, uh, so move. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Any concerns, Vice President Garcia? None for me. All right. Um, hearing no concerns or objections, um, the, uh, the item number five is received and filed. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Orozco, I think you, that, that you did your work. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, all right, folks, let's move to item six. Um, item six is a stop notice uh, from Savala Equipment Company, Inc. Uh, Savala Equipment Company, Inc. is transmitting a stop notice in the amount of $10,843.46 for furnishing heavy construction equipment for OHL USA, uh, Inc. in connection with the Machado Lake Pipeline Eastern Reach Project, C dash one three one four seven zero communication number one two two five one zero filed on july 20 2021 <coughs> excuse me um do i have a motion to prove this do, I, do we do we need to vote on this tj i always forget uh you can motion to receive yeah receive do i have a motion to receive and file this 
So moved. All right, I got Colosa, I think, first. Vice President Garcia as a second. Davis, any concerns? I will take that as none. So the item is approved and adopted forthwith. Um, item seven, release of stop payment notice. Um, progressive land clearing DBA Thomas demolition. Thomas demolition is transmitting a proof of payment satisfy the conditional release of stop payment notice um, in the amount of $20,093.79 and an unconditional waiver and release for the remaining amount for work done with connection to the Western Avenue Bridge Home Initiative project. The con primary contract for this project is HBG Construction Corporation. C-133317, communication number 122511, filed on July 23, 2021. <clears throat> Any questions or concerns, colleagues? Do you have a motion to move the item forward? So moved. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, any concerns or objections, uh, Commissioner Colosa? All right, hearing none, uh, the item is adopted forthwith. Thank you, folks. Um, that brings us to uh, Ian Monte. Uh, who's been with us um, and, and item eight is going to give us the status of the project labor agreements um, uh, in, in public works. Good morning, Ian. Good morning. How are you, commissioners? Good. All righty. So just going to do a relatively quick oral report. I'm going to try not to take too much time and then always I'll be available for questions. And uh, I will submit a copy of my report to uh, the board office uh, for those administrative purposes. So um, here, uh, again, my name is Ian Monte, representing the Bureau of Contract Administration's Office of Contract Compliance. And what I'm going to do is give more or less a to date and annual report of the achievements of the Department of Public Works Project Labor Agreement. And the data that I'm going to discuss is current as of this morning. So that is the beauty of technology here. So to date, uh, we have had 110 uh, projects covered under uh, the previous version of the project labor agreement, as well as the current version of the project labor agreement. And those projects that have been awarded total $1.39 billion. Jumping straight into the, the highlights and the- um, Yes, sir. What was that? What was that um, overall number again? The overall number is 110 projects. Yeah, the dollar. And the total award is 1.39 billion with a B dollars. You know, if you'd like, I can share my screen. I have a PowerPoint that I can show everyone. Would that be fun? Yeah. TJ, can we do that? Yes, we can. Let me just find. Right. And forgive me for not asking about that beforehand. It's okay. All right, Ian, you should be good to go with uh, your ability to share your screen. Thank you much. We can see this, correct? Yes, we can see yes. it. Yes, yes. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. So again, uh, 110 projects, totaling $1.39 billion uh, total award. So I want to jump straight into the highlights of the project labor agreement in terms of the achievements that we have. So uh, what you see is a dashboard, and it has our total number of project hours as well as the percentages as it relates to uh, how the targeted hiring of the PLA has been achieved. But I want to go just a touch deeper than what's on the screen here. So. As you see, the total number of work hours performed on all of those 110 PLA projects as of this morning, July 28, 2021, is 4,939,301.43 hours. Of that, the local hours performed is 
eight hours, uh, 0.39 hours, excuse me. So let me do that one more time. 1,860,70.39 hours, and that represents that 38% that you see on your far left uh, box with local uh, hours. But staying with uh, the local hours, I do want to talk about the number of workers because this is important as well. So the total number of workers that have performed those 4.9 million hours is 19,037 workers. Of that number, 5,490 workers are local. But that's significant because the local number worker compared to the total number of workers is 29%. So what you have is 29% of the workers that are Angelinos have performed 38% of the work. That's awesome. Jumping to the next uh, piece, we have apprenticeship. So the total number of apprenticeship hours performed on these projects is 1,122,450.41 hours. That, the local apprentice hours are 686,332.85 hours, which constitutes that 61% you see in box number two. But again, to go deeper, we want to look at the total number of apprentices that have performed work on these projects. So you've had 4,882 apprentices that have performed work on these projects. Of that, 2,162 apprentices were local. So you have 44% of the apprentices on these projects have performed 61% of the work. Again, that's awesome. And then finally going to box four, this is the transitional workers. And the transitional workers, there have been a number. Uh, I want to say it is looking at it right here, uh, it's 1,214 transitional workers that have performed uh, work on these projects. And again, these transitional workers are city residents with these different var barriers to employment, and they have performed 18% of the work on all of these PLA projects. So again, you're talking about a project labor agreement that has been extremely successful in getting Angelinos not just a job, but an opportunity at a career. And these numbers speak to not only the number of hours that have been worked on these projects, but the number of Angelinos that have gotten that opportunity at a career. Going into local uh, wages reinvested uh, back into the city, and these are the wages that local workers have been paid, you have 66 million eight hundred. $89,856.62 that has been reinvested back into the city. Of that, you have $17,408.46 of apprenticeship wages that have been reinvested back into the city. So again, you're talking about $66 million total reinvested in $17.4 million of apprentice wages, again, reinvested into the city. Absolutely awesome. And again, these are numbers that are to date. So understanding that this is now an annual report rather than a quarterly, we're going to look at what's happened over the last 12 months. And so the last 12 months, that's obviously encompassed within these totals that I just gave. You have 33 projects that have been awarded that total just under $500 million. You have 3,146 workers that have worked on these projects, including 686 apprentices. They have performed 533,432 work hours. Of those totals, you have 785 local resident workers that have performed one, uh, 196,148 hours, or 37 percent of the total number of hours on the project. You have 292 local resident apprentices and they have performed 64% of the apprentice hours on these projects. And finally, you have 157 transitional workers that have performed 76,186 hours, or 14% of the total number of hours uh, performed on the projects. And this has resulted in $7.58 million uh, reinvested back into the city for local worker wages. So again, these are great numbers, and these are... Uh, Awesome milestones over the last 12 months. So, normally we would end here, 
we are at the cusp of history. And the reason that we're at the cusp of history is we have a new project labor agreement that is circulating and getting signatures right now. And I'm hoping that uh, the Board of Public Works uh, president will be signing this agreement very soon if that hasn't already happened unbeknownst to me. So I wanted to talk about a little bit of this new PLA that will be encompassed in future uh, reportings. So I want to talk about some key additions and some preservations. Uh, key additions meaning these are new things to the new PLA and the preservations are these are things that were in the previous versions of the PLA and remain consistent in the new PLA. So in the 2020-2030 DPW PLA, this new project labor agreement is a 10-year agreement. The previous versions of the PLA were five-year agreements. This 10-year agreement was approved by City Council on June 24, 2021. Uh, this new PLA is going to initially cover 172 projects that are worth $2.61 billion. And this is just initial covering because there's always an opportunity to add this PLA to other projects on an individual basis. The 172 uh, projects right now equates to 38 projects per year at an average cost of $13.9 million a piece per project. At the end of year four of the PLA, what is going to be allowed and it's written into the PLA is we're gonna be able to go back and refresh the covered project list because right now the covered projects that we have listed as exhibit E of the new PLA only goes to the very beginning of 2026. And I, only, I wanna say it's only two projects. So after year four, we can get a better capture of what is coming down uh, the pipe, if you will, over the next uh, you know, a few years after that. So around 2024, 2025, we will be able to go and do a refresh. There are now 124 local zip codes that are within the PLA that constitutes local hire. And that's an, uh, an increase of 17 zip codes or 14% of the total zip codes from the previous version of the PLA. Uh, there is uh, executive directive number 27 language and that speaks to um, racial equity uh, in uh, city business and whatnot, and this includes contracts. So there's ED27 language within the agreements preamble. And finally, there is in addition to the transitional worker criteria where it's gonna include city resident, multi-core craft curriculum, otherwise known as MC3 graduates. And what the MC3 is, it's the Los Angeles and Orange County building and construction trades, pre-apprenticeship, uh, course uh, curriculum. And so again, those that are city residents that graduate from these MC3 programs, they would be considered transitional workers on this new PLA. Preservations as it relates to what is uh, exactly the same from uh, previous versions of this new PLA is we have preserved the target hiring requirements of the at least 30% of the project hours to be performed by local residents, at least 50% or half of the apprenticeship hours are to be performed by local resident apprentices. And finally, the 10% uh, or more of all of the project hours are to be performed by those transitional workers. So that remains. Uh, the apprenticeship utilization requirements that are consistent with the California Labor Code also remain. Uh, veteran status, homelessness, criminal justice history remain the first priority for all transitional worker criteria. The PLA has maintained the no strike, no work slowdown slash stoppage and dispute resolution language within it. And finally, there are core workforce provisions that allow all contractors, regardless of size or affiliation, to utilize those key core members of their workforce uh, without uh, necessarily having to forego them to utilize a, a union labor uh, fully. So these are the additions and preservations of the new PLA. And so with that, that concludes my report, and I am certainly available for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Monte. Um, I want to just uh, say right up front, I would love to see, or if you don't mind sending me that presentation, that would be great. Um, sure. Thank you. Um, colleagues, <clears throat> uh, do you have questions and or comments? President Pro Tem Dave? Yeah, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Ian, for the report, and very glad to uh, hear your analysis of 
of the work that we were able to achieve in this particular report in terms of the performance. In terms of the transitional workers that we have been able to include, I would like to have a clearer picture in terms of where we are as far as hiring individuals from areas of the city that have been underrepresented in our data in terms of employment, uh, particularly also those who come from the economically hardship areas. I do know that the transitional workers are designed that way to include these individuals who need employment most uh, in terms of veterans, in terms of those who have had some contact uh, having been incarcerated. And yet, still, I would like to see the breakdown of what that is because even though we've achieved the inclusion of transitionals in general doesn't give me the clearest picture that I would like to have as a board member in particular, particularly around how many people from South LA got an opportunity to work, how many people from South Los Angeles or East Los Angeles, how many people who, again, have been traditionally not uh, involved in employment in the past have now gotten an opportunity to be included in this particular report during this particular performance period. So if you could share with me, probably you might not have it right now, uh, but I would like to see a little bit more details in terms of what these transitional worker inclusion numbers really are. Is that possible? That is absolutely possible. I can, by way of technology, I am able to share uh, this kind of a surface level view, but mm -hmm. in the, the breakdown of zip codes and neighborhoods within South. For example, Alabama. let me tell you, let's get to, let me get to the point here. Sure. Um, how many people from the housing developments are hired? Nickerson, Man, I, need to, I would need to go Downs. back and. Nickerson, and, Downs, uh, Jordan's Downs. Uh, Hacienda Village. Uh, yeah, so that information I would need to break down specifically and uh, look at it first by zip code, but then almost by address, because I okay. don't think that I would be capturing that size. So if it's if it's at all possible, I it's don't possible. Know. It takes it's, a minute. Possible. Yeah, follow up with me so we can look at that because I'm very happy about what we've been able to achieve. But I also want to look more detailed in terms of what our pattern of behavior is. Because time and again, while we are able to achieve, achieve diversity in many instances, we still have underrepresented group while we have achieved our goal of accomplishing diversity. So I just want to see that uh, these fantastic numbers, I want to be assured that we are beginning to pick up in the areas that we need to pick up in, in terms of inclusion as it relates to uh, these uh, programs. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, President, President Davis. Um, Vice President Garcia. Uh, thank you, President Good. Ian, I appreciate the PowerPoint. Uh, you really, you know, I really like how that's, um, how you put it in that dash form. form. It's really easy to read and really easy to tell. And uh, I appreciate the numbers that are coming in. Year by year that I've been now on the board, I've seen it increase by a lot. And I appreciate that we're now including a lot more projects into the PLA project. PLA agreement, sorry. Um, other than that, Ian, good job. And I, I, once you break that down to Commissioner Davis, can you also send that over to me? I would love to see those numbers. Absolutely. What I'll do just to keep it consistent is I'll make sure that uh, all members of the board have it. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ian. Good report. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Commissioner Colosa. Uh, thank you, President Good. Thank you for your report, Mr. Monte. I think uh, all of us are, of course, deeply invested in and love seeing the big picture numbers of project labor agreements and um, 
nice to see how our new agreement that President Good will hopefully sign soon uh, when he gets it uh, more than uh, will more than double um, the existing PMA we have in terms of uh, the, the, the total cost of investment in, in the city. I think you said it was like 1.3 uh, 9 billion for the existing PLA and then the, the new PLA is, is um, 2.6, right? And At so, least. So that's, that's uh, you know, that's more than double, knowing that this is also the PLA that we're going to have um, through the Olympics. And we know that more work is coming our way. Uh, and sounds like more work is also coming our way um, through the federal government, assuming this infrastructure bill passes. And so it looks like we've got good infrastructure here to really make sure that the city and our workers um, get a good piece of the, the pie, if you will, of, of that work and making sure that they get the jobs. Um, the questions that I had, um, and I know you didn't share it here, um, I was wondering if there's any uh, changes to the metrics that BCA is collecting to kind of um, add on to the Commissioner Davis already mentioned. I, I agree with his sentiments and that would like to see um, maybe some more uh, micro or disaggregated data for some of these statistics. I think that'll be uh, really important to understanding where there's opportunities, um, especially with around hiring and any additional outreach that we can do because there's uh, a lot more that we can uh, uh, provide for our residents if we see that there's a gap somewhere. And so um, for me, uh, I know um, Commissioner Davis was talking about zip codes and you know, geographic parts of the area for me. And you know where I'm already going because I, I talk to you about this all the time is I really want to make sure that we increase our female hires. And I know that's not in your presentation, but I would just love to know a little bit more about um, if there's any changes in the, the metrics that we're collecting. I know we've already gone through this as it relates to the PLA, so I'm not going to belabor that. We, we've had a much bigger discussion on that, but I'm just curious if we're changing anything about how we're collecting the data so that um, when, when you get a, a phone call from me or from Commissioner Davis and we say, let's, we want to see, you know, data points on, uh, you know, gender, on uh, race and ethnicity, like what, what's possible when we, um, with this new PLA. So, um, you are uh, correct. And for those that aren't aware uh, the PLA does not have specific metrics as it relates to particular, I mean, particular demographics of individuals. Uh, on sex, gender, race, color, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that doesn't preclude us from asking questions um, just based on the preamble and whatnot. Not so much of, um, you know, how many did you hire and da 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 but more so what are you doing to hire? Um, the preamble of all of the existing PLAs and the new PLA does speak to the hiring of various individuals, which does include uh, women. So it's something that there needs to be some sort of an effort to do. Um, in terms of what's being captured, one of the things, and, and it's a beautiful thing, and I want to tip the cap to BCA's uh, systems personnel, is we have a multiple dashboard that allows anyone on a daily basis to look at the different metrics. And this includes a demographic dashboard that we have right now. And so for any given project or projects, or however you want to look at it, we have the ability to look at various uh, components. We can look at zip code. We can't necessarily drill down as far deep down as a neighborhood, like Commissioner David asked for, but we can look at certainly zip code. I can look at female hiring right now. In fact, as of this morning, uh, the total number of females that are working on all of the PLA projects, uh, past and present, is 247. Um, and broken down, I know that laborers uh, constitutes the largest trade that females are employed. There's 84 of those females working as laborers. Operating engineers is second. There's 45 female operating engineers to date. Electricians is third. There's 31 of those. And it also tells me the different contractors that thus far have hired female workers uh, by headcount. 
And it doesn't mean that other contractors are deficient there. It just means that these are the top 10. And the dashboard allows us to look at uh, that same metric through a lot of other different ways, <laughs> uh, including uh, wages that have been paid. So the, the ability to look at this information is there, and we are only limited by our creativity and, unfortunately, sometimes time. But certainly there and what we can do as we continue to move forward and continue to evolve is take a look at how we're doing our dashboards especially with this new PLA and say okay what are new ways that we want to see this information presented not just so that BCA is armed or even the contractors are but the community is armed as well so they understand exactly what the city is doing to help provide them opportunities and certainly your constituents would be able to look and speak to the successes and the challenges that they uh, see and the opportunities that they believe exist. So I think um, that's exactly where we can go with this. Okay. Um, thank you for the additional information, Mr. Monte. And um, I know we, we took a break. We had our listening session to, to really look at how do we promote more uh, work and, and jobs and careers for women in construction and the building trades. We took a pause on it because of COVID-19. Yeah, a pause, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we did take a pause because um, we... You're going to have pause, but it's all good. Yeah, but uh, on, on that specific initiative, but I will say that um, I, I will reconvene as soon to, to really look at that piece because there's so much opportunity here and uh, with a new PLA that's going to be in place soon with a potential infrastructure bill, I want to make sure that Women um, in construction, uh, just as much as men, have at least um, an equal opportunity to apply and be competitive for these jobs. And so I know there's more outreach that we can do um, with respect to that. And so I, I say that out loud so that um, all the, the bureaus and the representatives here can also put on your thinking caps when you see things um, come across your desk, where there could be more opportunity for outreach or engagement. Um, with specific communities, not just related to, to women, but for all communities of color, that, that, that that's something that we, we all, um, you know, put at top of our mind. So, but I appreciate um, seeing that the big picture numbers, Mr. Monte, always super impressive and just proud of uh, your work. And of course, John Weimer for his leadership on these PLAs and of course our, our union partners. So, um, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I was holding on, lifting my mute because there's a siren outside. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Monte, for the presentation and thanks for the um, the discussion, President Pro Tem Davis and Commissioner Closer. I think you know, look, it it, it is a uh, it, it it probably does make sense. And, and, and Ian, I'm I'm hearing you in terms of, I mean, you're never not uh, willing to figure out ways to. Uh, uh, do the work, and um, you know, as we prepare to launch into uh, a new ten-year agreement, um, I, I think it, it, it would be of merit um, and and worthy of of a little bit of time. And and you know, feel free to also say to us, it's actually a lot of time, but um, you know, to uh, get a little more scalpel. Um, like with uh, with these numbers, and and I think that that's just a, that's actually really important for BCA. I think that's very important for the board. I think it's important for our union partners. It's important for everybody. Just it's 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 just going to help us. Um, I think Jessica said it. it's going to help us know where we need to do more work, where we need to um, buckle down with our, our our contracting partners, where we need to buckle down with the unions uh, or with our, with the trades. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it might even be worth you looking into how we could do that and what, what, how to sort of build out that dashboard um, further um, as we head into this new, new agreement. Because I, I certainly would be um, very, I, I get the challenge of neighborhoods versus uh, zip codes, but, but, but even looking at that, and, and I, I would certainly be interested in here seeing um, even more parsed numbers. Um, so. But, but meanwhile, congratulations on the work that's been done. Um, the, the, I mean, the literal shattering of goals, um, which is exciting um, to say the least, and an affirmation 
um, of the uh, the utility of the vehicle of a project labor agreement, not just to preclude work stoppages and ensure the safest, most efficient construction of projects, but also as a vehicle for opportunity. Um, it has been uh, it has been the the, the, the narrative of, of, of uh, John Reamer and the narrative of you and of BCA and of this board for, for many years now. And those numbers actually bear that out um, quite, uh, quite, quite clearly um, and, and, and um, in a very pronounced way. So congratulations on the great work, Ian. I'm very much looking forward to signing that new agreement. And then um, let's revisit um, how we can get, how we can, dig in even deeper on, the, on that data for, for future case making and, and proselytizing, quite frankly, about the, the value of the, the social value of project labor agreements. Absolutely. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Thank you. All right. Have a great day. Um, colleagues, I need to step away, unfortunately, but I'm going to hand the proverbial virtual gavel over to Vice President Garcia, who will... Um, um, see uh, the board through the meeting. So thank you, everybody. Have great days. Be very, very safe. And uh, talk to you soon, okay? We'll see you see everybody Friday. Thank you, President. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, um, we, we just have a very last item. This is really easy for me to do. So I'm going to read into the record our oral report for sewers five and six update with the Bureau of Engineering. Who is going to be doing that presentation? Uh, I will be. Uh, George Wong. Oh, okay. Mr. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Thank you. No problem. It's all you now. All right. Uh, good afternoon, almost. Well, and uh, I'll be giving a, a brief uh, report regarding the uh, sewers uh, semi-annual and contract closeout summary. Uh, the sewers, uh, it's a long acronym, it's a super expedited wastewater emergency rehabilitation for, uh, for sewers. It's a, con it's a f uh, fixed contract. Um, and uh, the one, the first report is this previous uh, contract, which is the in its fifth um, series, so the Sewers 5 contract. The term of this contract ended on April 26, uh, 2018. Uh, right now, we the current uh, status is that we have worked with BOE, has worked with the Bureau of Contract Administration um, to verify that uh, we can close out this contract and that all the projects um, that were issued, there are no funds due to the contractor. Um, and there are no protests. So a joint um, BOE and DCA board report is currently being circulated uh, for management's review. Um, and then eventually it, it, it will work its way to the board for uh, consideration. Um, just some quick statistics. There were about 938 projects um, in Sewers 5. And then the total cost of uh, that program after all the numbers were tallied was about $25.5 million. Uh, and that concludes the uh, Sewers 5 update. Um, are there any questions about this one? I'm gonna, I'll move on to the next one after. Okay, no problem. Okay, uh, the, next, the next one uh, is the update, the semi-annual um, summary update for the Sewer 6 contract. This is the current contract. Uh, it started on November uh, 3rd of 2017, and it will um, expire on November 2nd of, of 2022. Um, for a total of five years. Uh, so currently, we're into uh, this about 73% of the contract duration. And uh, in terms of the uh, construction orders issued, which is uh, in our, in our kind of in our uh, sewers world is the uh, notice to proceed, um, we, or, we issued about a total of uh, 1,032 projects to, uh, to contractors. Uh, there are currently three contractors on this uh, Sewer 6 contract. Uh, it's uh, Matthew and Stewart and uh, MNR Construction and Tomovich and Associates. And uh, in the total amount out of the 1,032 projects, about the construction order amount that we've issued is about $33.9 million. Uh, and then there's a, uh, out of those pro amounts, uh, those projects, uh, we issued also about $2.0 million of uh, of change orders um, throughout the life of this con current uh, contract. And that brings a total uh, amount 
uh, issued under the Sewer 6 contract to about almost about $36 million. Uh, the contract ceiling for uh, the Sewer 6 contract is currently at $43 million. And uh, that, uh, that leaves a total of about $7 million uh, remaining in the contract ceiling, um, which is uh, which means that we, uh, out of the $36 million, we spend about 84% of the $43 million uh, contract ceiling. And right now, uh, the, the BOE is also working on the next contract, uh, kind of planning ahead, uh, which will be the Sewer 7. And right now, we uh, do have a board report that's being circulated to advertise the uh, request for uh, proposals from the contractor. And, uh, and then soon, we'll be advertising that out and uh, getting uh, pre-qualifying uh, new contractors uh, for for the for the next uh, Super Seven contract, and with that, um, that concludes the report. Uh, any thank, I thank you so much, Mr. Good report. Any questions, colleagues? Uh, Commissioner Colosa. Uh, thank you, Vice President Garcia. I don't have any questions for Mr. Huang. Um, get to hear about um, these different projects on a project-by-project project basis um, through BOE. But I uh, just appreciate your report, and I think that I just want to commend um, you, Mr. Wang, and your team and BOE for the, the format in which you guys do this. It makes it much really easy to follow and to see big picture, uh, you know, what's completed, what's in construction, you know, it's been canceled. And so I just wanted to, to say that, um, but no questions from me. Thank you, Vice President Carson. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Uh, Commissioner Davis. Any yes, uh, yes uh, Mr. Wang, I wanted to ask in terms of the sewers five and six update, uh, in those projects, are those projects that are also available for collaboration with project labor agreements? I know we have them in certain projects, but are the sewer projects among those that collaborate with uh, BCA in terms of looking at um, project labor agreements as it looks at how we can achieve uh, inclusion in, in those areas? Uh, we do, uh, we do um, at the time of the application to encourage local businesses um, to apply um, and then during the review. Uh, in terms of project labor agreements, mm -hmm. uh, I think we do, actually I, I don't know the I can, chime, I can chime in here. Um, so since this is a uh, sewers, you know, stands for super expedited wastewater emergency rehabilitation for sewers, emphasis on the emergency part. And so typically for our emergency projects, we do get um, a, uh, a waiver um, because of the emergency nature of the project from, from the mayor's office for, for some of these. Well, you get a waiver, you get a waiver for inclusion. However, at the same time, my question is in the fact that we have this emergency work and it all do, does appear, we don't know where it's going to appear. Do we utilize the opportunity we have for project labor agreement individuals because they would be available in the union halls if we sought to use them uh, for this work. Uh, I do agree that when we have exemptions, then we don't have to achieve inclusion. However, as we look at emergency work, we always have emergency work. We could also use, we may not be able to get a subcontractor or a small business person because we're exempt from that. At the same time, the uh, project labor agreement gives us individual workers, not companies like small businesses. So that's why I asked the question because uh, I don't know if we do it or not, but it could be available. No, I think that's a great point. Um, uh, I'll let you go ahead and finish, Mr. Wang. Sorry for interrupting your answer. No, that's okay. No, that's fine. Well, no, uh, I, I can definitely. Uh, get that answer. Um, I, I think we don't. Um, I don't think we limit the contractor in terms of using uh, the crew that they use or the, the labor that they uh, select in terms of the for the emergency work uh, that we do under the sewers. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that we do follow, you know, the uh, DIR um, uh, 
labor rates. And uh, I, I think we, uh, that's something that I would kind of need to get back to you on. Okay, all right, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, colleagues? Comments? Okay, it doesn't seem like we have any other questions, Mr. Wang. Thank you for your report, appreciate it. Look forward to uh, you coming back and updating this on all of this as always. So have a good day. Other than that, um, Mr. TJ Knight, are we done for today? Yes, we are, Vice President. That, that clears the decks. Perfect. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, a good Wednesday, and we'll see you, those that are coming back, on Friday, 10 a.m. All right. Good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.